What I'm going to do is go over the PV Triflex system. Depending on which ad you're looking at, there's going to be variations of the system. This particular one has four channel wireless mics. You may see another ad that has dual wireless or corded mics. It just depends upon which ad you're looking at. Uh, for demonstration purposes, this customer has their own laptop, so we're just putting ours there. They have their own TV and so forth. So basically what they're getting is the 15 inch powered sub which has two amplifiers built into it. The first amplifier powers the sub, the second one powers the pair of speakers. Then you have the PV PV10 live sound mixing board, four channel wireless microphones, all the necessary cables. You also have a special cable to hook up to your laptop which routes over here. Basically your standard laptop is going to run an eighth inch jack into the headphone and then also if you want to make the sound better you could get an external sound card which you see on this system which is going to be superior to most of your internal sound cards. The only time that it's really not needed if you're a DJ and you have a DJ controller that has a built-in sound card they're typically good enough. Okay I'm going to go over the connections of the system real quick. These are your main connections here. You have the 15 inch powered sub which has the casters. You could tip this up, roll it around. You basically have the main left and right out of the mixer going into the left and right inputs of the subwoofer. Then you have two speaker cables coming out of your left speaker out, right speaker out, and it's going to lock into each speaker. You'll notice that this has dual RCA so let's say you don't have the mixer and all you want to do is hook up a laptop to this you can easily run the laptop set your master volumes and then control the volume off of the laptop itself. You'll notice that I have the master set if you look at the master right here the master system level is probably if you think of a clock it's right around 1 to 2 o'clock this one is definitely at 2 o'clock. You could adjust it however you want. You could even put this full out if you're in a much louder area and you need to get more power quicker. But most often this is probably right around where this is good setting. Some people will put it down even lower in smaller environments. You could test it however you want. More so the thing that you have to watch is there's a green light here. Once it starts blinking into the red you need to back off of the main volumes and always stay in the green. Okay, going back up to the mixer. You'll see the laptop we have is hooked into this channel and you'll notice that it has white buttons. These are pushed down for each of the media channels. So you have two media channels which actually split into four if you ever need to hook up four different devices you'll notice that they're different inputs but most often this is what most people will use we mentioned the main left out and right out on the mixer then as you go over here you basically have six different channels which could be used for microphones keyboard guitar you'll notice that these are XLR XLR is always superior to a quarter inch input but you do have both of them just in case you need to use the quarter inch. These two rows are specifically for the microphone. This third one with the inserts, let's say you want to do a guitar, keyboard, you could plug it right there. Okay, now we're going to go, we talked about the subwoofer. Those are your master volumes. Then you have the secondary one, which is your master level. And what this is, this is how much signal you're allowing into the overall mixer. So this is the first thing you set. You see that for this customer we put a sticker here that says max. So we really don't want them to go over this and you'll notice that it's zero. That's called zeroing out your board. He could go up higher and you'll be fine as long as you watch the LED lights here and also on the subwoofer. But for the most part this is where we want it. But let's say you're in a small environment and you just want to play background music you could easily back off of these mains and the, let's, this is your media channel you could just come in real slow and keep it lower now you see 
how low that is. Now if I put it up to where it's supposed to be, there's a big difference between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here. So once again, this is how much signal you're allowing to funnel through the entire mixer. Then it breaks down to how much signal do you allow to go into each channel. These are your gains for each individual channel. You'll notice that your media channel is set right around six. You'll notice the second one's not even on, but that's more so because I'm not utilizing these channels for anything right now. So I'm trying to minimize any type of distortion or electrical sound that could come through these channels, even though most often it's not gonna bleed. And you'll notice that I also push these white buttons, which are mute buttons. So all four of these channels are basically muted and I just have the media channel, which has the laptop on it right now. And then I have the four microphone channels on. You'll notice the microphone channels are basically set right around, it's a hair over three. And if you think of a clock, that's right around 10 o'clock. You notice how it's much lower than your media channel. And the reason for that, your microphones are gonna be much more sensitive. This doesn't mean that you have to keep it here, but this is a safe bet. When you start bringing in the microphones and you're listening to them and they start to have the ringing noise or the feedback, you're gonna to wanna to adjust it, whether you turn down your highs or turn down your gains. But this is probably one of the safest spots we've seen. This works well in our area. We have 12 or 13 foot ceilings, 1200 square foot. Okay, going back over to the right side of the mixer, you have three white buttons right here. You have one which is called contour, which that's basically, if you think of an EQ and you're adjusting an EQ, you want the highs to sound better, the mids to sound a little different, you're adjusting these. This basically gives it a quick boost. I have this engaged, so it's pushed in all the time. Then you have what's called a tape USB to mix, tape USB to control. That's gonna deal with the control here, as well as your tapes here. 99% of the time, no one's using this unless you're doing home studio recording. For this purposes, you're gonna have these two white buttons, they're up, so you're not using them. Then also above this is a plus 48 volt phantom button. You'll notice that it's recessed. So that makes it where you can't push it in easy. What this is, is if you buy choir mics or phantom powered mics, you could push this in and it will deliver phantom power to each of the microphone inputs. You have your standard LED meters. Basically what you want to do is you always want to stay in the green. The one thing we will tell you is the system is so efficient that even if you were here, it doesn't necessarily mean you're safe. You always have to remember the back of that subwoofer to keep it in the green. If you ever go into the yellow and red on this mixer, you're clearly doing something wrong. Then above this is the headphone. This is the volume for the headphone and that's the jack for the headphones. Then you'll notice two other knobs here. These knobs are master volume knobs that control how much you're allowing to go into these channels. I realize you have a gain that allows so much to go into this vertically, but these are specific to two different functions. You'll notice that it says monitor and effects. The effects is how much effects you put into the microphones. You'll notice that there's nothing here because you really don't want to put the effects on the music for the most part, but over here, you'll see the effects on the microphones are up. But this basically is just your standard. I would say keep it there. You could adjust it a little bit. Then you go up, this is your echo station. These are all the different rooms that you could go into and it's gonna make it sound completely different. So don't, uh, don't hesitate to go into these different rooms and figure out what echo seems the best for your use. Then you have what's called a time knob. All this does is it changes the depth of the echo. Try it at zero, it sounds flat. Keep bringing it up, it may sound more springy, may have more delay, etc. And this basically is the amount of dbs that you put into decibels into the effects center itself and this this is an effects defeat that's kind of like a mute button then you go up here you have your like we said the main left and right outs this is just another connection for the same thing then you have your effects send so let's say you didn't want to use these effects and you had an effects processor that had over 200 effects on it and you would rather use that this is going to go to an outboard processor then you have your monitor send.
This is what we were talking about down here, monitor. This is something that I recommend to everyone, is if you're doing karaoke and you're able to put the speakers, the best way you're supposed to run a system, and I'll show you real quick, we're forced to have these speakers just for display. You're gonna be in front of them singing because that's the way this customer is gonna set it up. But the best way to set the system up is actually utilizing this space. I would have this speaker right here, as far as I could get it over, and I would probably have this speaker there or even much further over off of the stage. And then you would stand where this mixer is. So you're basically facing this way about three feet behind the speakers. And when you're able to do that, what you could do is set up a powered speaker, plug it into here, and then now you're able to monitor the sound, meaning that your singers could hear themselves by separately controlling a monitor. Or, let's say you use a live sound mixer for a bar, and then you're in one room, but there's a pool room, and you just want them to hear the music but not at the same level, you could set up another speaker and run the volume through there. We went over this, this is your two media channels. The white buttons are always pushed in because most often you're just gonna use this. I labeled it for this customer, player and laptop. So you'll have these two functions here. Then you'll see that you have six channels. You'll notice that you have the four wireless microphones here, and then you have two extra channels. You'll also notice mentioned before that these are quarter inch plugs for mics it's just another way of hooking it up but the xlr is always going to be superior and then let's say you want to hook up a keyboard or a guitar that's where these insert plugs come in from the bottom okay you'll also notice that the microphones are color coded and the reason why i did that is let's say you have four singers on stage and you're about 15 feet away from them at the mixer and you're supposed to adjust people Let's say the fourth singer is a female. The rest of them are males. Male vocals are just gonna have natural tone in their voice, which is more bass. A woman may need a little bit of boost in the vocal area, unless she's not really a woman. But let's, uh, so let's say you have the fourth mic. If I'm 15 feet away and I see that it's the orange one, it corresponds with the orange. So I know that I could actually adjust any of this for the particular singer. Even if someone's singing low and you need to adjust the volume, you're able to do that. Now, looking at all the knobs, a lot of people tend to be afraid of equipment that has a lot of knobs. With a mixer, the one thing you have to remember is once you know one row, you know them all. They're all identical to each other. It's just how you adjust them. So let's go from the top down. We talked about the gain structure already. You have simple highs, mids, lows, okay? Now, this is boosted a bit, but most often when you play music, you're probably gonna have this further down instead of having it up. And then for vocals, you'll probably boost the mid range because that brightens the vocals. But there again, you have the EQ, which is all in blue, highs, mids, lows. Then we went over the monitor channel how much effects you put into there. This basically is just a balance knob. I've never really used it unless I'm testing two types of speakers and just going left and right to see which one's better. Then you have your white buttons here. These are mute buttons. One of the things we want you to get used to when utilizing the mixer is we want you to, if you have one singer, mute the rest. I realize that sometimes you're gonna forget and say, oh, number two is not working. You have to try to remember, but once you memorize the board, it's going to become second nature to you. Then you have the faders. You'll notice that I have these microphone faders right around 20. That's a good starting point. So if you turn on the microphones, check, check, one, two, that's going to be a lot of sound. And you can bring it up further, but you have to watch for feedback. Now, one of the other things that I mentioned is how you have the speaker set up. If you're utilizing this in the home or a small area and you have to be in front of the speakers, you wanna make sure that you're at least 10 to 15 feet away from the speakers. If I'm on the microphone, check one, two, check one, two, and I'm further back, like in this space, I'm not having an issue because I have these speakers pretty far out. And I also have them up high. You'll notice that 
It's about six feet high because the stage is probably about six inches height. And this goes up about six feet. So having it over my head minimizes the feedback. Okay. But once you start getting close to speakers, you're going to hear what's called feedback. And then what will happen there is you're going to get this loud ringing noise. So one of the things that I'll typically do is I, may, I might uh, just go down a little bit here or take some of the highs out. There's a lot of things you could do. It has to do with acoustics and how things are bouncing off the walls, how close you are to the speakers. And for a lot of people, they don't know what feedback is caused by. Feedback is caused by when you speak through a microphone, it goes through the microphone, the signal gets transmitted through the mixer and comes out of the speaker. What's happening is if you get too close, meaning not you per se, but the sound that's coming out of the speaker gets too close to the element here, it's basically going to go back into the microphone and create a loop, and that's what you get from feedback. Now, going over the wireless microphones, you'll notice that none of these are color-coded, but once these are done, you already know you put the red one first, blue second, green third, orange is the fourth one. One of the things I want to show you on the microphones, when you take this off, you have an infrared scanner. You'll notice that e one of the things I did when I first set this up is this was actually on different channels and I noticed that they weren't syncing properly and it might have to do with the frequency here. So that's the biggest reason why these are here so you could change channels. And this is pretty awesome that they have the actual, and hopefully this could zoom in, they give you seven different combinations. And like I mentioned earlier, you'll see that you see how C and D are identical to each other? When I first got these, I actually thought that they should all be different, but apparently they're not. So the first two are going to be synced up the same, and the second two are going to be the same. Then you'll also notice that there's a quarter-inch plug here. Basically what that's for is, let's say you wanted to run all four microphones off of one channel. I've seen people where they go to host a karaoke show, and they don't bring out the rest of their gear, but they'll bring the wireless mics and hook up to some guys amplifier that only has one or two microphone inputs and this will help out a lot. Now going back here, you also have in the box, you're going to have a, a, a demo recording software. So you could use this for full-blown recording and you could come right out here, right to the laptop. You'll also notice, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I put this on here and I'm almost positive it's actually lead-based inside where it's going to try to block some of the additional electrical interferences that could get into the mixer. And we'll just go ahead and take some snapshots here. And then go back around. Now, one of the other things I wanted to show you was some people ask what's the difference between a component system and one that's professionally built. Well, one of the things is when you just have a mixer sitting here, you don't have to buy the rack kit. You don't have to invest money into a case, screws, power conditioner. And then once you start racking things, it changes the dynamics dr drastically. Okay, let's do this real quick. Move this over here. Here's another system right here. This is basically this same identical system, the core part. It's completely built. Now it's a, what you consider a mobile karaoke DJ system and the benefits to this is whereas you have a lot of cables that sit on the table no matter how much you clean them up you're still gonna have these here you have that all hidden in the back of the case this particular one has the laptop glider rail same mixer this one has the external sound card for the laptop which is clearly superior you're gonna spend about a hundred bucks to enhance the sound on your laptop, but anyone that could buy this, I would definitely tell you to do it. Then you look at the components that's in here, and you'll notice that this one has the custom LED fans. These are customized for us, so no matter where you think you find something that's similar, these are made specifically for us, and they are better than your average ones. Then above here, you have that same four channel wireless microphones. This is a processor. And what that processor does is it dramatically 
changes the sound, and then you have an added EQ, power conditioner. So it's a more expensive system, but in the long run, if you're the type of person that's gonna move the system around a lot, this is a really good investment. Or when you buy the component system, make a commitment to know that this is what you wanna do in the future. Because you're gonna continually, if you move this around, you're gonna continually put this in boxes, and then sooner or later, you don't wanna keep putting this in and out of a vehicle. This particular customer is actually using this for the home, so they have no need to move it around a lot so they could invest their money more in quality as opposed to features. Then you can look over here, here's another one that we're building and this is another customer that's getting a similar system but now what they're doing is they have a rack case that is on wheels and they could just walk up to it and not have to worry about taking anything out, setting it on a table and it even has a locking drawer that you pull out. So there's a lot of variations that you'll see. Even in the background here you see a DJ chair. You'll notice a lot of people professionally will go do a DJ rig and there's a lot of people that talk about them and hate seeing them sit on chairs. What that's for is that's a DJ chair that adjusts and when you're sitting back onto it, it doesn't look like you're sitting. So as I said, there's a lot of variations that you could utilize. Look at some of our other systems. This is the TriFlex one and then the one that's a little bit better is the PVX series where you have the 12 inch PVXs with the subs and so forth. And we could go over all those differences. And one other thing that a lot of people are adding to their systems now is a lot of different lighting effects and so forth or lasers. That's pretty much the system in a nutshell. Be sure to ask us any question. We don't put these videos up to advertise or say that this is the best or that's the best. This is more so to genuinely help a customer with a really in-depth tutorial on how to use the system. Because the one thing that we hate the most is going online looking at product and everyone's just bragging about this, bragging about the price they could sell it for, but they never truly tell you how the system works in and out. This basically makes it dummy proof.